can see there by that return. She's finding hard just to get a read on where that serve is going. It felt like she was leaning in the wrong direction, but was able to get that return in play. Yeah, and she, she's trying to do something, isn't she? Because you can see she's really creeping on in close to that service line, trying to, if she does get a read on it, use the pace back at Rybakina. taking it early that's what she's trying to do she's trying to rush those swings and not give her as much time on the ball that she's been able to dictate so easily with It was heavy. That serve made it hard for her to get on top of it. It really jumps up. When you're trying to run in, catch it above your shoulder. You really have to get it perfectly off the string so it doesn't jump off. Spray wide of the line. Perfect serve. First ace of the match. Sheer pace is outstanding. You should be happy to keep the focus at the beginning of this second set. Maybe a little lapse just at the end of the first when Navarro was trying to just change something slightly. Because really, it was all the way for Bakina. Everything on her terms, plenty of points won. A lot of winners, 16 compared to two. Just in cruise control, able to get four breaks of serve. So it wasn't too concerned when she got broken at the end of that first set. Those numbers are carry over as well because against Julin, 20 winners and just 14 on force. Well, it's been tough so far today for Navarro. She knew it was going to be very difficult facing someone like Anibakina, but what a year it has been. We talk about her roots also. Started playing the older brothers, tennis, uh, very much in the family. Her dad owns the Charleston event. She's known that club and those surroundings, and she does say, of course, that green clay is her favorite surface. Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> you liked the fast stuff, didn't you, Mel? I did indeed. Get me back to Wimbledon. Oh, nicely done. Just redirects beautifully. Great timing. It's not that I never liked the clay. It was more that I just didn't play on it enough growing up. And that makes a huge difference if you're at a club where you've got the different surfaces and especially the movement on a surface such as clay. Really good to develop your game and your movement. What are the differences between green and red clay? The red clays are a bit more kind of springy. The ball can jump up a little bit more and grip it a bit more. So I did prefer green clay to compared to red clay. <laughs> Shelby Rogers, another native of Charleston. Also doesn't ruin your socks as much. That's a huge benefit. It blends in a bit more, right? <laughs> Go 
coach there, the uh, middle Peter Ayers. Nice serve, open up the court. She is starting to find moments. A few points here and there that she's able to dictate. And it's having the calmness to not want the ground to swallow you up when you feel like the match is getting away from you quickly. I think if any player that you can probably be calm, it is Ribakina, because she can rip into many players on the tour. So you don't quite feel as bad. Just keep looking at what you can do. Just held it. I thought she was Has held off the bike in that game. players taking their towel breaks next to their coach's box now, don't you? <laughs> so that they can get the information which you're allowed for your end of the court, as long as they're not shouting down. Oh, you could just see moving back as she's trying to move that arm forward, hitting the overhead. It can be tricky when the overhead's not as high as well, and you're looking up, especially when the, the floodlights start to come on, the difference in the sky. a chance for Navarro. This is a big moment. Love 30 on the Rubakina serve. Was able to take the one break point she had at the end of the first set, but to get a break of serve early on in a set really boost her confidence. can sometimes seep into the game of Edubai, can I just some misses in succession? First time really it's happened in this match. Yeah, and it's when your opponent comes out here playing phenomenal tennis, you kind of have to ride the wave as well and hope that that level dips at the moment, but be ready to take advantage of it. And she was ready, taking advantage of that blistering return. So a little shift in this second set. Navarro with the lead.
just past 6 p.m. Local time in Doha. Night time indeed. Emma Navarro does have the break advantage in the second. She'll want to consolidate here. And that's the sort of ride that could give her a lot of confidence outlasting it if I could. Yeah, completely different tempo from her. It just shows the mental side of the game. The fact she's got that break and it's just boosted her to continue to be aggressive, more positive with her own play. And definitely more depth to her own shots as well, Navarro now. pair of title winners in our first two rounds, Navarro. The Italian, first of all, Jasmine Paolini, 6-3-7-5. Was able to create uh, more breakpoint chances in that one, 13-5. to five. And then Elisa Mertens, second round, 6-1, 6-3. first serves, one. Broke five times. That was a rematch of the Hobart final, which Navarro won in three sets, 7-5 in the third. They were the top two seeds in Hobart. Thirty six to Yastrzemska and five for Navarro. Yastrzemska was doing the much of the dictating, which she likes to do. Quickly, momentum can just shift and go one way, but a 3 1 deficit for Ribakina when she has her serve, as long as she can hold here, could quickly be drawn back. She won't be too concerned just yet. Yeah, good change of rhythm. Maybe we'd liked a little bit more depth on the forehand that she looped up higher, but still did the job, just giving different looks to Ribakina now. In that game in which she was broken in this set, did hit many uh, first serves. There were some looks on the second serve for Navarro. All three so far in this game. Right into that backhand. That's 21 winners for Rubakina now. Five in the match for Navarro.
Just shaking that double thought off. Two in total. Percentage tennis going cross court, but also the ability to, to really whack it as she did there. Reduces the deficit to one game in the second set, but Navarro has the break lead. Some shadow swings for Rivakina, who's looking to get the break back in this second set. Her fans hoping for the same. Brilliant. It's a textbook practice point, isn't it? Side to side, heavy hitting into the open space. And just a little tucked up there with the elbow on the return. Credit the serving of Navarro now, just hitting different spots, a little bit of change in the spin. He's really grown into this match, Navarro. Just getting accustomed also she is to playing, getting to these WTA 1000s. Did play in Guadalajara end of last season, the third round. Position all the favor of Rivakina in that rally. We're matching each other for depth early on in the point. 
Ray Bakina, who's able to turn it around and then dictate from the middle, get the shorter ball. This one just floating a little too much, and Ray Bakina can deal with it effectively. There's a player just on this court who won in that third round matchup in Guadalajara, Leila Fernandez. Of an injection of pace there. It's a big juncture of the set. If she can get out to four two, we're looking at the deep end of the second set. Yeah, it was the right pattern of play. Just poor execution with the backhand down the line, just too flat. You've got to get your feet in the right position. Oh, oh. she anticipated. That was a chance. Yeah, she knows it. I thought Navarro had picked the wrong way with that shorter ball. It's a fantastic serve. Beautiful combination of shots. It measures the finish well as well. Doesn't over panic on the shots. This is where you can tell she plays on clay. The slide on a hard court. Can I with a break back point? Oh, took a big cut at it. Team Ribakina on their feet, supporting her, knows that she's had to work hard, just dig in now. Very competitive set, Navarro. You can understand her going for a big cut because it's the fact that she's been brave, been more aggressive. They've got her the lead in the second set. Just unable to keep hold of it. phased by this yes it, it's a, another level of player who she's up against so she knows she can't kind of slack off but she's been able to fight back last season she won 64 matches across the itf and the wta circuit she was able to win five titles all in the states itf level 25,000, all the way up to a hundred thousand event a lot of winning Had a lot of the court to work with. Easy. 
Yeah, those types of volleys, Ribakina has really improved when she's able to just finish it off, opens up the court, move forward. It's a time if she doesn't do enough on the approach shot, she might get caught out with her positioning at the net that you can pick her off. But there, she was very much in control. The volley racket had worked nice and simple. Oh. Too with good. that sort of shot, she can get also. Yeah, that's going to get past anyone's racket. Adding to that winner's difference, 26 now. Navarro still on the five she had earlier. Swung it out wide. Has backed up the break and also quickly. Now in front in the second set, already up by a set. That was a tasty rally. The length, very good from both. And the weight of shot as well. Baseline to baseline hitting. Very central through the court. Big target. That's Navarro who comes out on top. Excellent serve with a side spin. Yeah, happy with that top spin. She missed that forehand, but she showed variation last year in terms of results, different services, including on Clay. You can see, well, can't you watch? You'd have that success playing on clay, the heaviness she can get on the forehand. Yeah, she's got a very solid all-round game, hasn't she, from the, from the baseline. You can see where she's got a bit more time on the ball.
she can then look to dictate. She was doing so there in that point, at the level of rearback Enid, just biding her time and waiting to turn the point around. And she's done well here, considering they haven't played for quite some time, and rearback Enid being the fourth best player in the world at the moment. She's kind of got used to the pace. She's settled into this match. Moved right wide and then moved in. Yeah, setting it up hard through the middle of the court. Maybe it wasn't the cleanest of hits when she switched to the top spin there. It was a bit on the outside edge of the racket, but it did the job. Gets out of that game for four all. I find it funny when players look. It's not going to change the call, just seeing how close or how perfect it was right on the line that time. Those backhands were quite something. Just a, such a pure strike out the middle of the strings. just caught out and felt like she couldn't recover quickly enough. Yeah, it's the danger, isn't it? If you take it that early and you don't hit a good enough shot, you can catch yourself out, not have enough time to recover. Ripakina first serve percentage has really dropped in the second set, 52% compared to 68 in the first set. So it's giving her those chances. But that one she found. We've seen the flags, Kazakhstan flags, some of them, the stands. A story about how after she won, Wimbledon, so many calls they got the Federation about, how do I make my my daughter Wimbledon champion, a Grand Slam champion? They really developed in terms of their tennis. There are many centers now in uh, Kazakhstan. Players coming out, and of course, she is the Grand Slam winner. In terms of these singles, Iribakina has a 5-4 lead.
tighter second set. But now it's Emma Navarro serving to stay in this third round match. Oh, <laughs> a lovely point. You just have to be so ready, don't you? Squash shot here, thinking it's going to be too good. Look at that pickup. One more ball. Mm, another forehand slice. Right into that hip area. Okay. On the first point, when she had to defend initially, Navarro, that was big. They got up to 15 love instead of. Well, 15, and she's leveled. And she's been able to be more positive in this second set. Rubakina with a lot of winners overall in the match, but Navarra in the first set could only hit two, now eight in the second. She's finding more ways, and that's been the hard work, going harder through the middle, getting more depth on her shots. And some subtle rhythm changes. Came with the change of rhythm early with that slice. It makes such a difference because Ribakina really likes it when she can go faster, faster, faster and rush you and get you on the move. Navarro just starting to get things a little more on her terms. So difficult to do against this woman. was a big point. Get out to love 30. But you touched on something earlier too, Mel, talking about how she it feels like she's really growing to this match. And kind of somewhat coping with what's coming on the other side of that. Something Junk Kim Wen talked about right at the Australian Open, the fact that the more you're in these positions of playing these matches against these high ranked players, the more comfortable you eventually get. Okay. Just having that experience. You just can't beat it being on court, having that time. So if you can keep your mind nice and calm, you can do it within matches as well, not just take it for the next time they play. Oh, that was extra power. She wasn't far away from that ball. It's great use of the body. The whole rally. She was the one dictating. Yeah, really controlling the baseline. Bossing the point from the middle of the court. She didn't have to run anywhere there. Ribakina kept Navarro running side to side. Tiring out those legs.
Ripped it down the tee. Her box on their feet. And again, she's a game away from potentially winning this match. For a second time, serving to stay in this third round match in Doha. A better body serve. Going at that left hip of Rebakina. Getting the slice on it, coming it into the body. They have come off the line, that forehand. for that shot. Hands too separated to the body. to line. Great core presence. Does it back in? Are both in the point and between. Very calm, but a good positive stride. Great posture. Whereas Navarro caught the line, only just missing. And if I can, uh, 
has gotten to a tie break in this set. In those two situations, never easy, especially facing somebody like Inabaka now to hold the love at 4-5. And then there, not being taken to deuce. It's her first tiebreak since that tiebreak she played. <laughs> what, the 42-point tiebreak? <laughs> There again, you can understand, obviously, why she's moving, wanted to be aggressive on that second serve return, but just didn't get the depth allowing it if I could have to put it deep. But it's what's got her into this second set by taking those chances, so she can't go away from that now. Has to trust the process and just know every now and then you might catch it wrong as if it's every single point. Using that reach to her advantage. She's trying to be more clinical, isn't she? At the beginning of this tie break, she doesn't want a repeat of a really tough battle in it. Just her second tie break this season, Navarro. <laughs> Facing a pretty big deficit now. Other one coming at the Australian Open. She lost the second set against Wang Chiyu before winning the third set. It's a big difference between the tiebreak to seven and the champion's tiebreak to ten, isn't it? The final set tiebreak. Three love. Almost half the tiebreak down. Four, Has to keep her focus here now, though. Not relax. That was the point she desperately needed, Navarro. We don't see the reaction, but she'd be fuming with herself inside. It's the fact that there wasn't much pace on it, just needed to be a little quicker with the hand at the back of the ball. Stayed low. Good shape on that forehand. Wasn't a bad approach by Ibaikina. Well, Naomi Osaka yesterday in her tiebreak, second set against Petra Marcus, she was down for yes, love. She was. Came back to win it. Straight points. You've boosted her confidence, Ravi. Just taking a couple of extra seconds here. See a little bit of tension in the backhand that time. When tension comes into the muscles, they just feel a little bit heavier. You don't get that racket head as quickly through the ball as you would like. Did have that four love lead. You, you wonder if she's if that four love point, but it could have been five love. Is she still thinking about it?
five consecutive points. Five, four, oh, I said she shouldn't back away from that tactic. Worked so well on that point. Rebecca just not getting enough heat on the serve there. Herself. Who's going to get the set point or the match point? She's hit two aces in this match to Varsher. She'd love one here. <laughs> Just one double. Oh, she made it. Could have gone either way. Talk about backing yourself, hitting the line. She enjoyed a little glance at that one. <laughs> Match point. of backhands and the tie break. Not quite having the trust. We saw that one hit the line to set up the match point. Right there, just a little touch, the miss hit. Even though she's not actively thinking about that tie break, it's got to hurt. It's got to be in the mind. It's so recent. 42 points not getting through. She upped the aggression. Felt like on that last point with that forehand, Navarro. Made it. Set point now for Navarro. Takes the second set. And has saved a match point to do it. We are going to a third in Doha.
Still waiting for the uh, return of uh, both players on the center court. Dramatic conclusion to the second set where she saved a match point. Navarro just having the time to go and speak to her coaching team. Whilst Rybakina is off changing her attire. Couldn't hear much of what was being said, but there was a lot of information. You could just hear him saying, and the one thing I picked up on, being aggressive and backing herself, which is exactly what she did to get herself involved in that second set. She's very similar to Iribakina in the sense that outwardly you don't see a lot of the emotion. It's really a change in and you're talking about Amel, the approach in that second set and hung in there and you know she she played well on that she played aggressive let it go on the on the match point she saved even if it was you know potentially an unforced error you would say from her opponent but then hit that big forehand winner She will begin set number three. Good start for Haribakira. She's going to want a good start here because mentally that will hurt. We know that tie break against Blinkova that she lost. Having the match point, it's never easy to lose a match point and then have to step out again after a 58 minute second set. Go play a whole nother set. Change of pace. A beauty. Well, smart. Talk about Navarro having to step up her own intensity in that second set. But Ribaki, maybe just aware that she's kind of played her in a little as well with the pace. Lovely change up here. Good court awareness. And we saw at the back end of the second set on that forehand. And the belief is growing. And that's what we're actually having that little time out, being able to speak to your coach about exactly what was working well, because you're getting little bits throughout the match when you're near them. But to have that two-way conversation is so important to believe and grow into it. But she'll want to do that as well. Take it away from her opponent. Where it's so enjoyable to watch because it turns into a real battle now of who's able to get their game on first.
after saving the match point of the tie break, come out and save the break point to begin the third. And will that be something else that just gets inside the mindset of Rebecca? They're just not taking that early initiative with the break point opportunity. She's having to deal with a different opponent out here right now. She's got a howled of her game. She was a lot more aggressive herself. Navarro in that second set. She only hit two winners in the first, 10 in that second set. She was taking the ball a lot earlier, rushing Rybakina a little more, and the first serve percentage really risen. By virtue of winning those matches last year, Mel, she won more than 60 matches. Do you think that holds her in good stead for this third set, the fact that she has gotten used to winning, or because she hasn't faced many top 10 players, do you think that's sort of irrelevant, the situation? Definitely not irrelevant. The fact she's played so many matches, she's got great match fitness. It's just another level. It's the fact of getting across the line against the top player. I've done it once before on the three occasions that she's faced a top 10 player. But you learn how to think, maneuver matches, keep fighting, stay in it, even if you do face a match point. <laughs> Giving herself a lifeline of just hanging in here and then it's doing more of the same and just believing in herself. Keep taking those opportunities when you get them and ride the wave when Rebecca just takes the racket away from you like she has these last couple of points. Yeah, it was there for. Took it. The first top ten win for Navarre coming in San Diego last season. Third set tiebreak against Maria Sakari. Didn't have to save a match point in that one, but. She, she went to a third set tiebreak and she was two points away from defeat. Just ahead of the tiebreak. This would take the cake if she can do it here. Love Rose Ofcut this week. Don as her coach. And her sister was with her last week in uh, Abu Dhabi. Well, that choice of shot you thought was very good from Rybakina. It was going to win at the point, you thought, but good feel from Navarro. And she was almost chasing down the lobby, expecting it to go out, wasn't she? Because it ended up being quite far away from her, over to the right. Jumped away as well. for it to come into the slot there. Mike and my sister was also with her at the Australian Open and uh, their panning to her showing her in the stands while that tie break was unfolding and oh. some of the some of her reactions. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough for a sister. It is, yes, it is. Heavy stuff on the forehand. And she's doing more of that. 
It was similar when I was watching Von Drosha's sister at Wimbledon when she was so close to winning the title. You wouldn't want to look over to that box at the time. <laughs> but nerves running through your veins. Well, these balls all of a sudden, they're all catching the line, not floating long. Just the way things are going at the moment. 2 1. last two matches 2021 to Laura Siegman who can produce the various spins out on the court and then the Romanian 2022 that was her last visit Jacqueline Christian got a good week in Cluj at that uh, bad knee injury a while back This is nicely done. No panic whatsoever. Threads it down the line. She also played in 2020, and that year, the start of the year, she went on a tear winning Hobart. Also third round, the Australian Open lost to the world number one. Then Ash Barty, final of her next event, also final in Dubai, thrilling the climax against Simona Halep. And then was due to face Barty in the third round in Doha, walk over there.
It's a good sign for Navarro because she's pushing the movement of Rybakina there, but not having to go too close to the lines either. So I can really feel like she's starting to play within herself. advantage of the fact that Navarro just standing up in the court. Great body serve. Yeah, that's the play. It's getting the pace, so the spin of the body serve to try and take out the fact that she's trying to take it so early and take the swings away. Surprised out of frustration she hasn't hit a couple of first serves towards there because it's been so obvious. Maybe some of the frustration out there. Yeah, moving in well inside the baseline that time herself. a different point there, Rybakina, putting a lot more shape on her forehand, heavy topspin, and just feel like Navarra is going to be loving that. She'll be happy with that too. Missed from her opponent. Getting there. Credit to Navarro showing how fast she is. But an easy put away for Rybakina. Just how flexible she is as well. The pickup was phenomenal. And I think she'd be very grateful that Rybakina didn't try and pick her off there. Because <laughs> that was a target. Break point now, five games into this third set. Got yeah. some major luck there. And took advantage. She has the break now in this third set.
breaking hand and also new balls for Vibaikina. No, oh, not by much. To serve. Maybe she didn't see that coming in Ivakina. Phenomenal pass. It was Ribakina playing front foot tennis, but this is something special on the run. Taking away the next point. She's mixed it up on that side. Turns the direction going hard out wide and that one down the tee. Same number of bases now as in her opening match. Oh, finishes and she's done that a few times. Those tap ins up at the net at ample time. Backs up the break. She's doing a really good job behind both the first and second serve. She's only dropped three points in this final set. That's where she wants to be. That's where you can then take advantage, give yourself some opportunities on the return games. But she won't take this lead lightly. Especially after what happened in the second set tiebreak. Just lift it up know. early. Didn't get that one extra step out the way of the ball. Coming deep center, it was a good shot. She had time to move out the way. So far, the lowest tally in any set for Navarro. Points one behind the second serve. The set is at 33. I won that one. Going against the grain, hitting the inside out returns here. This is the forehand earlier, the backhand there down the line. You have to be in the right position to do so. 
not as much safety to it, but she's backing herself and it's just throwing Navarro off. Yeah, that will annoy her. It wasn't under pressure. Offers up the game point. Goes long, gets the game that she really needed to get to stay within touching distance in this third set. But it's an evacuate a lead still by break. Approaching the two hour mark now in this third round match. How do you see this end of the set going? Mel, do you think there's going to be maybe a comeback from Navarre? Do you think that Eribak can have settled and will see it through? Well, you just never know in a tennis <laughs> match, do you? But if she continues serving the way that she has it in this final set, then she has the break of serve. She'll get the job done. But you just never know. You wouldn't have called that a fall love in the tie break. I do think she's responded really well in this final set, Rebakina. There's a little more intensity in the feet. She's aware when she does make a mistake what the reason was and changes it straight away. tally for her in any of the sets so points one behind the first serve 83 percent and it gets even better as she approaches victory once more that's been the biggest difference only dropped three points behind the serve as we hit the two hours Can Navarro just extend this? Ask the question if she can continue that run on serve. Rubakina shaking out the legs, wants it done here. You almost have a free shot at it.
Yeah. She knows it was good, not just with the pace of the baseline striking, the heaviness, the weight of shot, the fact she's getting a lot more safety on the forehand. The heavy top spin. Exactly what she wanted to do. And she has been hitting those returns down the line as well, so she has to just accept it. All right idea. Completely releasing on the forehand. And nothing to lose. Everything to gain. Saw the opportunity, took it. Well, not forehand to forehand. Ripa Kina will be impressed, the fact that Navarro hasn't just crumbled here. It's been a lot of pressure being thrown on her shoulders, but sustaining such a high level herself. It does go long, so she stays in it. Emphatic stuff on the forehand from Navarro. But she'll have to break the Ribakina serve to stay in it. Seven for the match indeed, and a spot in the quarterfinals. Yelena Ribakina. Splendid start. It's as smooth as it comes.
talk about service actions a lot, don't we? And um, we're back in a serve. It's just so simple. So she goes straight to that throw position. She's able to use her height and her legs to get up over the top. Seemed to know exactly where that serve was going. Good cut on the return. And the first time she's really read the drop shot as well, and I think Rebakina just really saw that out the corner of her eye, felt the presence of her move forward. An opportunity here. She put that serve up in the box. Took the bar out of her rhythm. Time to throw the first one of this set in. First break point for Navarro in this set. This time she moved over to her left, yeah. but was fooled. She thought she was going to switch it up, didn't she? But she'll get a second chance. Rebecca has been playing such a good match. It's just closing it out. Good to see the tension again. Sink back into her body. Nerves are there for everyone supporting. Went there again. So much thinking going on in a tennis match. You figure <laughs> the players of our maybe think, okay, she went there last time. I think she's going to go back the other side. That wasn't the case. Back in behind. Work the treat. Yeah, too good. Going back to the patterns of play. Second match point. That first one was also on her own serve. Seal in style. Team is happy, including Mum. A thriller it turned out to be. After she had the match point in the second set tiebreak, couldn't take it, recovered in the third to keep this winning run going. And it's a first Doha quarterfinal for Yelena Nibaikina. And she will be so happy, and that's great for her mental confidence, mental strength throughout that match to be able to deal with not taking that match point in the second set, doing everything on her serve in the final set, a couple of shaky moments in that last game, but she was able to back herself, go back to simple plays, the one-two patterns. There'll be plenty of respect for Navarro and she'll be expecting another contest the next time they step on court together. 
Yeah, that was nice to see being applauded off by Eddie Vaikina there. What an effort she put in. Was able to regroup after the first set, and that's not easy for a player so young and experienced at this level, but she did so. First off, massive respect to your opponent, Emma, tonight, saving match points and forcing the decider. You guys, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, haven't played each other since you were teenagers at the U.S. Open in qualifying. How impressed are you with her game? Yeah, it's true. We played a uh, long time ago, and uh, we both were young, but yeah, she improved a lot, and it was such a difficult match. Uh, I had some opportunities in the second set, but uh, she played really well, and uh, uh, for me, physically, it was a little bit more difficult, but uh, yeah, it's been tough, and uh, really happy that I managed to win in the end. Well, congratulations and welcome to the quarterfinals here in Doha for the first time. As you know, it never gets any easier moving forward. You play the winner of our previous match, Layla Fernandez. And I can't find any meetings you've had with Layla as well, but I'm pretty sure you're familiar with her game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I know how she plays and it's going to be a very difficult match. Also lefty, a bit uh, tricky opponent with this. But uh, yeah, for me, the most important is uh, try to recover now and uh, uh, be as fresh as possible for tomorrow's match. Great battle tonight and best of luck in the quarterfinals. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fans, let's hear it for Yelena Rabakina. Yeah, it was a great battle. It turned out to be Thrill again, had to save those break points right at the end. Oh, I need to get better at catching. What if that one go out of the stadium? <laughs> Still got the power of <laughs> putting those tennis balls into the stands. Memento to take home, and this is what we saw out there today for Rybakina. She was able to get in double figures with the ace count. That's something we expect from her, and the serving points one fantastic in that final set. 